couple of years ago, it felt like all of a sudden, everyone was talking about cucks. At first I was like, wow, a lot of people getting into cuck holding. And then I realized, oh, oh no, that's not what they mean. Before it went mainstream, cuckolding was a relatively common but underground type of kink. It's a popular porn genre, and the Reddit cuckolding community has over 100,000 members. So today I want to talk about cuckolding as a kink and dip our toes into some of its interesting politics. In the past, and maybe, you know, not even entirely, a cuckold referred primarily to a white guy who let his girlfriend have sex with a black guy. The idea being that this is the ultimate emasculation. I mean, what could be more humiliating than your girl having sex with a black man? <laughs> These days, the racial element seems more pronounced in porn than in real life, and a lot of kinksters that I talk to don't even really know this bizarre origin story. In fact, they may not even know that the name of their kink is cuckolding. We also know now that women can be cucks as well because of quality. Of course, the main question that a lot of people have about cuckolding is why? For most people, the idea of their significant other having sex with someone else is enraging or maybe sad or threatening. Anything really but hot. So I put out the bat signal on Twitter. I interviewed about 50 self-described cucks over email and talked to a few on the phone as well. The extended cuts of our conversations are now up on Patreon. I wanna share some of the highlights from these conversations. Two clear patterns emerged when I asked people what they find sexy about cuckolding. Check out this clip with Travis. Cuckolding, I feel like there's like two main types. And one kind of goes in with like femdom type of uh, cuckolding where the wife wants to bring home, bring home a guy and like humiliate the husband. But we don't really do that. We do more of the uh, dual participatory cuckolding where, uh, you know, I really enjoy watching her with another guy. So the, the difference being that some types of cuckold situations are more about the humiliation versus um, being more about the mutual pleasure that you get out of it? Yeah, I think so. I, mean, I don't mean to say that the guys that are participating in the femme dominant humiliation don't get any pleasure out of it. I'm sure they do. Sure, sure. What I mean is more like, um, have you heard the term compersion before? I haven't. What's that? So compersion refers to getting pleasure out of someone else's pleasure. Ah, so... Well, that's a great term because I feel like that describes why I really, really enjoy cuckolding quite well. <laughs> So I would assume then that the compersion aspect of it is part of what you find sexy about it? Yeah, I think so. I find that really, really exciting when Rachel's having a good time. It's pretty awesome that uh, she gets to have a chance to be with, like, you know, hot guys. And, you know, I can participate in that and seeing her have a really good time. And, yeah. Compersion. This is like the exact opposite of jealousy, right? You're just so happy or turned on that they are so happy or turned on. A lot of people who are into non-monogamy experience compersion in some form. Another viewer told me he enjoys cuckolding because he likes watching his partner experience pleasure from a different angle. So it's like a visual compersion. So what's the other big pattern? Some cuckolds are turned on by the humiliation of it all. So when you, you said you don't fully understand why it's erotic, right? I don't fully understand it because it's almost a taboo. It's, in fact, it is incredibly a taboo. The concept that you get off from watching someone have sex with your partner because for some reason or another, you're, una you're unable to do it right. It's like you're into, it's, it's almost akin to piss play. You mean in the sense that it invokes this reaction of disgust? Let me put it this way. It's, I'm so comfortable talking about this and yet I want you to modify my voice. Because it's so stigmatized. Yeah. So is it is it the stigma, is that taboo, that sort of forbidden aspect of it maybe part of why it's sexy? The secretive part? Yes, absolutely. Men are supposed to be 
the alphas to an extent. Let's unpack this. The fact that it's stigmatized and forbidden is part of what makes it hot. And you know, this is the case for a lot of sexual practices and kinks. It's the forbidden fruit effect, right? When we're told that we shouldn't do something, it can make it more appealing. As a side note, this is also part of why abstinence-only education can make sex more appealing to teenagers. When you think about kinks this way, you know, it sort of suggests that even if we have this big sex positive universe where sexuality is okay, there's got to be this healthy space for sex to be naughty, right? Because in so many instances, breaking the rules is what makes it fun. But cuckolding in particular is naughty for an interesting reason. It relies on taboos about monogamy and about masculinity. Male cuckolding is eroticized emasculation. It's a submission fantasy. We're more comfortable with that when it's a woman, right, Fifty Shades of Grey? But it's breaking a lot of rules if it's a man. And if you ask me, this is at the heart of why cuckolding is considered degrading and why it's used as an insult. Those two uh, alpha guys down at uh, the casino we worked at, they were really big into calling people cucks. And it was disturbing to me in the sense that I was annoyed and afraid that maybe they'd find out that was me. Mm -hmm. What are they getting out of calling people cucks? I think when they call someone else a, else a cuck, it implies that they're not. And so and it makes them feel more... In some ways, I feel like this is the last deaf cry of uh, machoism. Mm, interesting. So they, they want to hold on to that whole, like, I'm a manly man. And by calling somebody else a cuck, it makes me more of a man. I feel like they're using it the same way that we're now you know, trying to get out of, you know, the same way that people used gay as an insult. Absolutely. I agreed with Travis and his partner here. Huck is just an edgelord's take on old classics. But hey, another of my cucklings, he didn't have a problem with cuck being used as an insult. In fact, he thought it was kind of fitting. By the way, the first time somebody was called a cuck in a political context, I, I thought it was very funny and I thought it made a lot of sense. Because... <laughs> The reason why I think it made sense in a political context is because it's used to talk about Democrats. And Democrats, whether you like it or not, are will always be viewed as the sissies on the political spectrum. Why is that? Yeah. Well, think about what they want. They want to help people. They want to help immigrants. They want to help refugees, provide free health care um, regardless of the cost to anybody. And God damn it, they're just, they just, they're too limp-wristed. They hug everyone. They can hug the trees. This conversation veered in another direction, but it really stuck with me. The idea that liberals are cucks or, you know, sissies or effeminate because they care as if caring is a bad thing. Red pillars of the world. This is what feminists are talking about when we say toxic masculinity. As if a guy should be shamed for caring about things. I mean, just think about that. Why do you think cock shouldn't be used as a pejorative? I don't think people should be shamed for what they're into sexually. To an extent, I agree with that. It's also because, you know, we've been talking a lot about the, the alpha and the beta and the male gender roles and all that, right? Yeah. And I think that there is a lot of damage that is caused with how heavily we police guys on this. People just need to chill out, you know? And the reason why I don't mind it being used as an insult or I don't take offense at it it's because that guy doesn't know what the fuck my life is. He doesn't know what I'm into. And frankly, I'm happy with what I get off to. It's okay. It's okay. Well, hey, I can get down with that. Thanks for joining me, babes. And shout out to those of you who helped me with my research. You were so very helpful and informative. I appreciate it. And a huge thank you to the patrons who make these videos and conversations possible. Let me know your thoughts down below. And I'll see you next time.